Right, here we're going to walk through three key points on viscoelastic removal after intraocular lens insertion. Step one is to aspirate through the main entry site rather than through either of the paracentesis. This allows washout around the INA cannula and avoids an uncomfortable pressure rise in the eye. Step two is a thorough clearance of the viscoelastic from the anterior chamber. That allows the lens to rise up anteriorly and assists in step three, which is a thorough clearance of the viscoelastic from behind the lens optic. Remember, we're always floating and pivoting in our entry site, avoiding posterior pressure. This avoids collapsing the AC. We're going to see this in slow motion here with those creases appearing in the cornea. We want to avoid that, or worse still, iris prolapse. Also, have a think about the IA system you're using. One of the reasons I like the Simco, it's a little old-fashioned perhaps, but it has direct coaxial irrigation, which makes this step here, which we're seeing in slow motion of nudging under the optic, very safe indeed because you're always blowing in front of you with the irrigation there. You can adapt your technique with other IA systems but the Simcoe is a very safe place to start. So having achieved a complete clearance of viscoelastic at the end of the operation and having fine-tuned the position of the lens optic you're ready to bring the eye to a physiological pressure to check the entry site and a quick way to do that is just to kiss the external ostium of the main entry site there with the Simcoe and that brings the eye up to pressure very quickly. Summarising the three key points again, work through the main entry site. This washes viscoelastic out at the same time as you aspirate it. It's more efficient and it avoids an uncomfortable pressure rise in the eye. Clear the viscoelastic thoroughly from the anterior chamber first. This encourages the lens optic to rise up and makes nudging under the optic and into the bag a lot easier to do. Why is it so important to remove viscoelastic from behind the optic? Well, there's some evidence from Japan that in addition to povidone iodine in the conjunctival fornix before surgery and intraocular antibiotics at the end of surgery, that another thing we can do to help protect from endophthalmitis is to achieve a thorough clearance of viscoelastic from behind the lens optic. A thorough clearance of viscoelastic from within the capsular bag also protects from capsule block syndrome, which I've tried to show you schematically here with a slip beam through the cornea lens and into the capsular bag showing retained viscoelastic pushing the lens forward leading to a myopic surprise after surgery. Right let's finish with a very important point about how you get under the lens with the I and A cannula. I want you to take a really good look at the starting position of the IA cannula here inside the rexis. Let's take a look at this schematically with the main entry site here, the iris shown here, the lens optic edge here in the capsular bag and the rexis edge here. The thing absolutely not to do is to try and get under the optic edge through the anterior capsule here. If you press down through the anterior capsule that can lead to a zonule dialysis, definitely to be avoided. The correct approach is to nudge the lens forwards in this direction while sliding the rexis edge posteriorly to get into this little gap here between the optic and the rexis edge over the viscoelastic which is still in the capsular bag at this point. So here we are one final time in slow motion sliding back over the optic there posteriorly under the rexis edge and digging slowly behind the optic edge there and the viscoelastic is there in the bag protecting you and the irrigation from anterior to the Simco is also protecting you at that point. But there's hand over hand modifications you can do with a bimanual ILA system. So I hope some of that is helpful. We're going to go on and look at intraocular lens implantation in the next video.